6,125 pounds, half ton towable, one owner, originally sold right here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is a 256 RKS Eagle Superlight that uh, has just been just time capsule kept. It looks virtually exactly the same, in some ways better. <laughs> than uh, when we first sold it to these owners. Uh, they are swapping out from a trailer and getting into a beautiful Mel Melbourne Prestige Jayco motorhome here. So they're happy with Jayco, they're happy with us, and they came back to both Jayco and us when it was time to update and upgrade. Locally owned, locally stored, maintained, traded. And since they're going into a motorhome instead of a trailer, they're leaving behind a bunch of accessories like their weight distribution and anti-sway hitching, like uh, load leveling, uh, uh, you know, pads and, and chocks, not load leveling, but camper leveling chocks and pads and all kinds of little stuff here. So if you are a first timer, this thing right here has a lot of equipment included with it at no additional charge that normally you'd have to spend a little extra money to get. And that ain't all bad. Now what's kind of cool here, not kind of cool, very cool. This is 100% travel friendly. You can get to every square inch of storage uh, from either door. You can walk in to get to the kitchen, the bathroom, the dining, the everything. You do not need to touch the slide to pack the camper up or to, uh, you know, make those quick travel stops to grab a bite to eat. You can get through everything here in the kitchen. It is a, it's like, a, you're, you'll hear me talk about it more in a minute, but this was, uh, this was always my favorite of its kind when it was first built. Now, quick note, you can see from just the gleam on that floor, this is clean. This is well kept. I can't find problems. I can't find, like, blemishes and scars. There haven't been leaks. Everything's in good working order. Um, I, they even tended the battery because we're on just their battery power. I don't even have one of my power boxes hooked up to it right now. This has been very nicely kept. It has a 6 foot 9 interior also. Keep in mind, this was not made to be an ultralight. If you look back through the RV fossil records, what... Uh, was called, when this was built brand new, the Eagle Superlight, was effectively the third tier up in the J-Flight family. You had J-Flight, you had J-Flight G2, and then you had an Eagle Superlight, which was quite literally just a laminated J-Flight G2, but they decided to put it under the Eagle name for some reason. It doesn't matter. That's not necessarily what they are today, but that's what this one is right here. And this one really takes me back, because uh, this is what... RVs looked like when I first joined this business. And this was the first one I walked into that I went, I could really see myself in this camper, and I still can. I started boiling down in my head, what are the qualities that I like in a couple's camper? You know, if it was just something for, for me and the missus. Well, I like rear kitchens because we get tons of storage, and this one does a very good job of that. We'll look at more of that in a minute. I like how this has a direct-facing entertainment center, which has just surged in popularity in more recent years. This has a strong insulation bundle. This has, um, everything is just bigger on this, and that, that's what I like. Everything on this, this was the, the biggest version of a floor plane like this I had seen, and to me it made more sense, and especially when we get to this big deep super slide I'm standing next to. But first, I want to take a peek at all the storage in here. Starting down here with the dinette, they do kind of a, a dual bench and storage solution. Over here, we just have a door that swings open, and that's very good for big, heavy stuff. And it's also nice that you don't have to, you know, um, take apart the entire dinette to get there. Now, as long as we're looking down at the dinette, this has the Eagle Dream dinette system from way back when. And uh, basically, there's a gas strut to make the tabletop go up and down easily to convert that into a sleeper. But it is not a, uh, a pedestal base. Uh, I also love that it is carpetless under that dinette, which is something that's kind of tricky to find sometimes. Now, over here, for small, loose stuff that can kind of wiggle around in transit, they give you a full extension bench drawer. So it is easier to get uh, to all of that. Now over here in the kitchen proper, I've got a lot to cover. Where do I? I'm, I'm going to start up here in these overhead cabinets. Now, remember, we have a taller interior. That means that we have greater overhead storage capacity. There's even all the original owner's manuals and everything up there. This has been very well maintained. Now you do have a venting hood, but they put an additional vent uh, above the kitchen there. So if you're cooking up a storm, you can exhaust a lot of heat. Now we have a, uh, a floor to ceiling six foot nine pantry, and I love how it's right by the door. Very easy to quickly access. And what's cool is you can put maybe some of your outside use stuff down low. So all you have to do is open the door, reach around the corner, and grab something. You don't even really have to track in and out of the camper. Now down below the countertop here, one thing I would personally do if I purchased this camper is I would take that shelf right there and I would remove it. 
and that would give me room for a very big wastebasket, but to each their own. It also would not be hard to put a wastebasket beside the countertop over here. You could do that too. Speaking of which, decent counter space. The, the, uh, the rear wraparound sort of L counter here is something they executed very well. And you actually are seeing styles like this come back into popularity in today's production. It's funny how everything that was old is suddenly new again. And that classic silverware split drawer on top with all those uh, plywood dividers here, that's just classic Jayco travel trailer camping. Now, down here, they didn't waste any of the space. Instead of just having a dead pocket under the refrigerator, they actually uh, you know, added an additional drawer right here so that it is easy to get to everything. And again, you don't have to get on your hands and knees to get down there. Now we'll come back to the sofa in a minute, but I wanted to point out this monstrously large closet next to that sofa. Because if you're paying attention, you realize that it is fully contained within the slide out. A lot of manufacturers who make a floor plan like this, they will either stop the slide before the closet, or they will make the closet half as deep and they'll make the slide out more shallow. And that's where the 256 Eagle always differed from virtually any other version of this floor plan, is they went with a full three foot deep slide, not an 18 inch shallow slide or anything like that, but a full floor flush big daddy slide out starting with the refrigerator all the way over and what that creates here ladies and gentlemen is just an absurd amount of storage capacity in a small easily half ton towable couples rig i mean there's more storage right here in the slide compartment alone than uh some rvs i think have in their entirety in terms of cubic foot of total storage space now those mirrored fronts on there are handy not just for like you know, the obvious reflection purposes, but it makes it look bigger. It makes the whole camper look bigger. Now over here, the uh, the sofa, what I like about this is that it's not all wore out and broken down. This was a very gently used, very well-maintained camper, um, but it is also directly facing the entertainment area, and that can fold open into a, uh, a bigger, like, adult-sized hide-a-bed, though it being an airbed style, knowing what I know about this business and the history of RV airbeds, I would recommend you probably want to plan on replacing the air mattress if it's even still present. Very few of them ever seem to work, which is why I'm glad they're not here anymore. Now, I've mentioned direct-facing entertainment a few times. When uh, this was first made, RVs did not traditionally, well, travel trailers in this class and segment, did not include TVs standard in the way that they, you, you could almost assume a laminated trailer includes a TV nowadays. It's, it's actually more uncommon that they don't. But when this was built, the inverse is true. Over here, though, we do have uh, a DVD stereo. And you can see where uh, a TV was added to this one. And the owner went through and put a couple little travel lock bars up there, basically, just to make sure the TV wouldn't, you know, bounce and jounce around in transit. So it would stay where you want it when you want it. Now, you do also have a, a big pocket up here. And there is a little uh, a hole drilled through there if you do want to expand your entertainment options and plug it into a TV. Now, this has tilt open windows with uh, pleated privacy shades. So if you want to get some rainy day airflow or if you just want to blot out the sun for privacy sake, you are good to go uh, to do exactly that. Uh, we do have centrally ducted uh, heating through the floor and enclosed heated underbelly. And we do have uh, centrally ducted air through the roof with a couple neat things. This is a cold air dump feature. When you first get to your campsite to cool off the living room, flip these open. After that, you want to shut it. You don't want to leave those open the whole time because you can actually damage your uh, air conditioner coils effectively. But when you shut them, it will run air through all of these central ducts. But something Jago's done for many, many years is they've spent a little more money on an air conditioning system that can both turn and shut each vent individually. And that's something that very few RVs uh, have uh, consistently done over the years. Some do, some don't. Jago's have very consistently for a long time. Now... Pretty common traditional bathroom for the time this was made, but three inch taller interior means three inch taller shower. And this extra height in here is something that you still see done in like the J Flight family today. Remember, this was effectively just a, uh, 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 a member of the J Flight family that said Eagle on the front. But that's one of the reasons I tend to camp in a J Flight most of the time is because I can stand in the shower of one of these things without putting my head in the bubble. Now up front here, this uh, does have currently the original Camp Queen mattress in it, but if we take note, there is more than enough room for a full 60 by 80 residential queen bed. 
And not only can you put it in here, but you could do it and still walk around the bed. So they did leave you the room for that. That extra large window right there does open for airflow. Huge side stands and, and full length hanging closets. That taller ceiling also means bigger cabinets uh, for clothes hanging and just for general storage. And there are TV hookups on the uh, wall over here opposing the bed. Although you will notice you have virgin wall panels and nothing was ever screwed into them or anything like that. Back outside here, this is just about as clean as they can come. This was not stored outside, um, so as such, the skin has all the original like gloss and gleam. The decals don't have any sort of peel or fade about them. Uh, the roof has not absorbed a lot of uh, extra sunshine and weather and snow. Everything on this is the way that you want something to look, whether it's brand new or new to you. You get that extra, uh, you know, gloss and shine about it. Let me get down under here. Just to give you a quick look at uh, our belly compartment. There you have it. Now, uh, this has all laminated slide walls, uh, which is kind of cool. It's a very uncommon thing. A lot of manufacturers, especially when this was built, would still have um, non-laminated slide walls over here, which uh, not necessarily less strong structurally, but I can guarantee the structural integrity of this and it's fully insulated. Now this storage compartment actually goes to the bottom and back of that big slide out closet. So you can use it like bonus outside space. And then once again, there, well, there's the guy's new motorhome rolling roll through the background right there. But uh, the, the care, the upkeep, the maintenance that went into the skin of this is absolutely undeniable. Um, back here, a couple things I want to point out. This does have uh, an old style slide open cargo tray. I always kind of like Jayco's a little bit better because it has a stop point so you can't slide the tray out and have it fall on the ground. But you could use this as a bike rack. But if you note, previous owner actually added an extra little uh, bracket receiver hitch on the back here. I'm going to guess where they mounted a bike rack there. Maybe they preferred that as opposed to the, the tray on the back. I'm not exactly sure. I can't tell you. Uh, the roof ladder, we will use that in just a minute to get up top uh, to uh, take a peek at all the roofing. But before we get there, what I want to take note of here is your extra wide main entry door and the, the complete, basically, lack of obstructions under that patio awning space. They also put about the biggest power awning on this thing they possibly could. And something I like is that it easily clears both entry doors and it's positioned so that uh, even if you open the bedroom door all the way, it still won't hit the awning arms because when you hit those awning arms sideways, that's when you can have some damage. And man, oh man, this roof has been cleaned just like the rest of the RV. They did such a good job of keeping this out of the sun and doing all their active preventative care and maintenance. These are all original factory seals up top here and they're all still pliable, viable. You can see that they updated the antenna, added that um, King Jack uh, sort of antenna wing on there. They added the Max Air vent covers over all the vents, whether it's the bathroom, the bedroom, and the kitchen area. This is sharp. One thing I haven't looked at, I want to take one quick note. Yeah, the front termination strip, everything looks good. This is, uh, this is one of the number one places you want to look on a used RV, guys, to make sure everything's in good shape, and this is in great shape. So, give us a call. Hitching, pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. We do it all at Halo RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping everyone.